Hi, this is Jan, you're watching LXG. Sunday news. I'm Token Gamer Chick. I'm Merrick. And we are here today to talk about just a couple of things that have been going on after the last little while. Apologies for not having Second Class Elitist or Belgarath97 here with us today. You get us. It's okay. They're a little busy off doing other things at the moment. <laughs> Somebody may have their fingers actually super glued to a model right now. <laughs> I think that's only a minor possibility. So we have some news. Yeah, we have some Kickstarter news. We're going to start with Miniature 13. I don't know if, uh, if you guys have been paying that close attention to them. They, uh, they decided to do a short Kickstarter. We talked about these in a previous Sunday news. Mm -hmm. Well, the pro to this is they funded. Uh, the downside to this is that they had that, that delay that they were trying to avoid by going with only um, 17 days versus the full 30. It was um, an interesting concept. They wanted to cut out the the deadwood of a normal Kickstarter. Normally, you have a great splash at the beginning and then everybody catching in in the end. And they just wanted to merge it all together. Really, it didn't seem to do that. No, for uh, it looked like they got about five or six ish people in the first couple of uh, the first about five days or so, um, and then they waited until the last two or so before they got the, the rest of them. I think they ended up with about 11 people in total. So they got about another five or six. So they still had that dead period for about a week. Yeah. But they they like, did fund immediately though, didn't they? Yeah, they, they, the, the, first, like, the first five or six people actually did fund almost immediately. They, they, were, they were already at almost all of their stretch goals. I think the last, the last uh, uh, about last five or six people actually knocked them up to the 250% they were at. Gotcha. To well, budget. So, interesting experiment, but I think a failure as far as what they were going for. Maybe next time we'll see somebody do a, a one-week Kickstarter in order to try to cut out more of that dead air time. That, that is definitely a possibility. Um, if, you, if somebody wants to try that, I mean, just, just put a message in our comments, man. I, I'll, we'll gladly go over that and watch it and make sure that we talk about it. We might be Kickstarter junkie analysts at this point. Just a slight bit. If you're doing it, comment. We'd love to see it. So, a couple of weeks ago, we may have talked about this Kickstarter. It's the ACP uh, Games Kickstarter. It's for <laughs> the dropship. I don't know if you guys remember, because I was talking about this one. It is a hoagie. It is this big. All right, we're in Philadelphia. A hoagie is a large submarine-like sandwich. Perhaps you call it a grinder. Um, either way, they're large. They're delicious. Well, they're getting close to the end. They only got about a week left. So if you were even remotely interested in getting yourself a dropship that's this big, you might want to jump on that. Um, How big is it? It's big. Uh, how many are you getting? Uh, it looks like I'm going to be getting one, but it looks like uh, Second Class Letus is getting himself three in total, which means I might be getting one of those. So oh. we'll see what happens. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Good times. Um, the next one we're looking at is Impudent Mortals. This is actually a terrain Kickstarter. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you guys are familiar with this one or not. Um, from the pictures I've seen, like I've seen their refineries, a lot of their pieces look awesome. If you're really into getting a, like a, an excellent terrain. I mean, we love our terrain here in um, LXG. As you've probably seen from just about any game that we play, we tend to overload it by some people's standards. <laughs> we think they don't shoot high enough. Um, they've only got about a week left. Uh, I really recommend you take a look at that because it's just, it's, they are some really awesome pieces of terrain. Like I said, I've seen the refinery and I think that looks great. They're the ones with the skylights and everything too? Uh, yes, they are with skylights. Oh, oh, the skylights. If you like a little bit of extra on your terrain, these things can right up there. Um, the last, uh, excuse me, not the last one, the, the next piece we have is Daft. They are, um, actually, hand me that real quick. Sure. 
They are the little wooden cutout figurines. Their Kickstarter has... One day left. If you're watching this after Monday, Monday at midnight, you're too late. So we're going to try and get this up fast so you can know about this and actually pledge into it. Okay, they're still great little things. They're taking all kinds of medium for us here really well. Uh, all kinds of things. Colored pencils, markers, paints. Uh, if painting is not your thing, if you're more comfortable with colored pencils or markers, it'll it's work awesome. perfectly. Okay, what's our next thing? Oh, our next thing is Dwarven Forge. Dwarven Forge has got himself a new Kickstarter. Dwarven Forge. If you haven't seen any of the Kickstarter movies and the how to and let me introduce you to my thing, I'd recommend starting with the Dwarven Knight and Dwarven Forge Kickstarter intro movies because they do a fabulous job. I find them all very entertaining. He's so into his own product. Uh, I still can't get over the first time I saw it. I mean, he ran over his own product with a truck. Okay. I'm not even talking where we're being funny. He ran it over with a truck. I mean, like a full-sized, full-wheel uh, four -wheel drive just ran over and went, eh, it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. For those who may not know, <laughs> uh, Dwarven Forge makes great tabletop terrain. Uh, their target audience is actually uh, role-playing game tabletop things, not wargaming tabletop. But their modular terrain is fabulous, and they've come up with a whole new um, product, some kind of vulcanized rubber spin-off, and they call it Dwarvenite. And the stuff is amazing. The stuff will survive past you and probably past your kids, <laughs> even if they're war gamers too. We have dropped it. We have run over it. I, we haven't microwaved it, and I'm not going to. But if it did, I wouldn't be surprised. If, if it, it lived. Back into place. <laughs> um, uh, we have been faithful followers of the Dwarven Forge Kickstarters for the last two ones. They've been doing them annually. Uh, the first was just dungeon tile and gorgeous. The second one was natural cavern. This time, completely different. They're doing buildings. Yep, that is, they, that is completely correct. They are doing modular buildings. Mm -hmm. For your, your basic buildings, you have two different styles. Well, actually, for all your buildings, you have two different styles. You can either go with, like, a Tudor style or a actual stone building. Mm -hmm. These are great because, like, the, the, um, they come with four, excuse me, four posts to actually create your walls. The basic, the basic building is, uh, what was it, about four by four? Four by four. Four inches by four inches. I think they're only... Uh Two inches tall, though. Right. It, it, the initial building is only one is only one story, so it is fairly small. Um, but it is something where if you get yourself like I think their second their second actual pledge in value gives you six buildings in total. Yep. Three and three, so three Tudor, three stone. You could literally make that a three story tower. You could make that a six story tower if you really wanted to. But yeah, they're incredibly modular, very versatile. Very um, appropriate for a multiple genres, mm -hmm. if you want, out there. Uh, the one limit there, they're a little bit small for some of our needs, but they're a great 25 millimeter building. Yep. Fabulous. 25 to, to 28 millimeter would work perfect for them. Um, if you, When you look at their video, they actually show off a couple of models that actually look like they're going to be producing. So uh, they will have they will have some two scale models that you could also purchase to go with it that then may be more your alley as well. And I highly encourage anyone to go out and if you're interested, back it and back it big because they promised one of their stretch goals would be sewer. Very yeah. excited about that. I think it will go great with my dungeon and natural cavern, and then you have sewer works. <laughs> oh yes, there will be sewer. I'm sorry. I just wanna I, I wanna get the sewer, put it down on a table, and just go. Hey, look. This is the shitlands from Spinesboro. I just want to put that down and go, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to wonder why it's all on fire. <laughs> You'll never get Belgareth to go there. The last time Belgareth played me in a shitlands thing, he, uh, we accidentally caused a complete zombie tidal wave to come in. We had to take all of Ali Alcatraz's zombies in the entire clubhouse and put them on the table. That's, it was fabulous. That's the, 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 uh, that's still terrifying <laughs> because she's got... S I think Allie has more zombies fully painted than I've ever had models owned at times. That's just kind of how it feels. It's a little terrifying. I don't want that to happen today. She's doubled the amount of zombies she had since then. 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, so a lot of great Kickstarters out there. Dwarven Forge literally started yesterday. It's got lots of time. Already unlocked a couple of stretch goals. Go check them out. They're really entertaining, they, fun, awesome guys. In one day, they've already, I believe, jumped to um, half a million, I think is what they were yep, saying. they're at half a million dollars. So they, they're, they're going, not necessarily going fast because it's a Kickstarter, but they are going... They are going to be funding probably within a week if they haven't already. Actually, I think they funded already. Yeah, they're well funded. Their goal was only one hundred thousand, um, and now they're at half a million. So they're funded. They're good to go, and they're great quality product. I have stood by them all the time, and they're just a blast to play with. You'll yep. see us playing on Dwarven and Forge tables. You will, because they're awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, what else do we have besides Kickstarters? Oh, we got one more Kickstarter. One more look. Kickstarter. We got awesome. one more quick Kickstarter to look at. That's Waste Man is the name of the Kickstarter. Well, this one is actually a post-apocalyptic Kickstarter. Um, it's different in that it's 35 millimeter, if I remember correctly. So it's a bit of a bigger game than mo most of us are probably used to playing. The actual game... Uh, the game itself look. Uh, excuse me, not the game itself. Excuse me. The models look pretty good. Um, I did enjoy the um, their quirky uh, their quirky twist on the post apocalyptic world. Um, and from what I was seeing on their uh, from their videos and their actual webpage, I loved their status tokens being able to be put right into the bases. I thought that was a great a great little tidbit that they could do to add to their game. Yeah, I've seen a lot of clever, clever things in there. Bases with slots already in them, so you can add your status tokens in there. Uh, and there's their activation tokens, also mm. quite, quite clever. Um, they're all bottle caps. That they are. So any of you guys that, you know, know this genre and love, you know, just love playing in it, or Fallout, if that's another one for you, you know what a bottle cap looks like, and these are bottle caps, and you they're, want these. They're awesome. They're really, really keen. Mm -hmm. That one has 20, uh, 26 days to go, because that one was a more recent, uh, more re uh, excuse me, that one started more recently. It's about a third of the way to its goal, mm -hmm. so we do hope that one does go through. I think it will. I th if, if it's already a third of the way through, and it's only had, you know been going for four, uh, four days, yeah, I don't think it's going to have a problem. All right, then. Okay. Um, well... Next thing on our list is actually Adepticon. Adepticon is coming next week, so we're hoping that everything goes well there. And if you're going there, you know, be good safe, luck. have fun, play games. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people at Adepticon. There's going to be a Warzone Resurrection mm -hmm. tournament. There's going to be a Malifaux tournament. There's mm -hmm. um, is there a Drop Zone Commander tournament? Yes. Yes, there will be a Drop Zone there will Commander. Will be a Drop Zone Commander tournament. Uh, lots of fun people, lots of fun games. If you're going, I am jealous of you, but be safe and have a great time. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I think that's it for our, our news news, for out there in the world news. Uh huh. This is this next piece of news is actually a uh, token gamer chick's pride and joy at the moment. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, Mr. Alex Huntley out there from Warclock Miniatures, thank you! Thank you very much! There was a Sunday news out there, you heard me behind the camera begging and pleading on bended knee with a tear in my eye and a song in my heart, begging for him to put up for sale his ancestral dragon, and he did! And I got it literally yesterday! But it's here now with us, and if we can get a close-up here on this thing, I want to be able to show you exactly how large this guy is. Mm-hmm. So here he is, on the table, tip of his nose twirling all the way down to the end of his funky little tail. That is a one-foot ruler there, folks. I think if we were to actually stretch him out and lay him end to end, he would be close to 22 inches long. He's huge. This thing is monstrous in size, and it's awesome. Yes. He is going to be magnificently done. I already have one of Mr. Huntley's already gorgeous dragons. This is his fire lizard that I've already got all done up beautifully there. Well, foliaged and based and everything, and he will have a friend. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> That's the, I don't know if this one calls a friend or food. Hey! <laughs> do not despair. I believe in you, little fire dragon. You can totally kick his butt. However, you're both going to look magnificent doing it. Um, Alex... 
I don't know where you get these crazy ideas from, but keep them coming. As long as you keep predicting beautiful things, they will find a home here at LXG. Absolutely. Thank you. I was literally in tears. I was so happy to get this guy. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Although I think I'm going to modify it a bit. It comes with this brilliant piece of terrain as part of the basing so he doesn't topple over. But really, this is such a nice little archway. I think I'm going to use it as a separate terrain piece on one of our tables and find something else to counterbalance him on his own base. <laughs> so we'll see what that happens there. But yeah, work block miniatures. Arc world. Mr. Huntley has some fabulous, fabulous sculpts. He's a very unique signature artist. Love his things. If you have anyone out there for something new and refreshing for your paintbrush to go over, check out Warblock Miniatures and Arc World Games, because dang, some of them are so pretty. Mm hmm I agree. I love the way this thing looks. It is huge, and it's just awesome looking. Well... That appears to be all the uh, all the news we have for today. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'm I'm Merrick. And this is Token Gamer Chick, and that was that was our Sunday news. Thank you for tuning in and watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you are going to have a fabulous time this week. Go out and play some games, okay?